Today we're going to talk about Trump's dire financial situation ahead of this week's fraud deadline, and I interview Congressman Jared Moskowitz about his challenge to Jim Jordan and James Comer, the likelihood of foreign aid passing Congress, and his tour with the vice president of his old high school, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, in Parkland, Florida. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen, and you're watching No Lie. We are now on the cusp of the deadline for Trump's massive $455 million payment or bond in the New York fraud trial. Now, here's what we can expect. The most likely option, in my opinion, is that he can't come up with the money, in which case Letitia James begins the process of seizing his assets to satisfy his judgment that way. Already, she started the process of preparing to seize at least one property owned by Donald Trump, and that one is called Seven Springs. It's described, according to the Daily Beast, as a Bruce Wayne-like mansion surrounded by 212 acres of dense woods and rolling hills which I'm sure is a perfect compliment to the very understated gold toilets. Now, she filed this judgment in Westchester, New York, about two weeks ago, which means she effectively has a lien in place in the event that Trump tries to sell the property or otherwise shift his assets to avoid having them seized. And if the value of Seven Springs doesn't satisfy the full amount that Trump owes, which is that half a billion dollars, she'll keep seizing his properties until they're made whole, which means that we may very well see Trump Tower turn into a, a spirit Halloween in time for October. And here's another option, one which I'm increasingly worried about, that he finds the money from a foreign government or a foreign entity. Here's what Trump's lawyer, Alina Habba, said when asked about this possibility directly. Um, is there any effort on the part of your team to secure this money through another country, Saudi Arabia or Russia, as Joy Behar seems to think? Well, there's rules and regulations that are public. I can't speak about strategy that require certain things, and we have to follow those rules, like I said. So, uh, not a no. I feel like that would have been pretty easy to refute if they weren't seeking funds from a foreign entity. But that poses a pretty serious issue. Let's say it's Saudi Arabia or Russia. Bailing him out now means that in the event Trump wins the next election, then those countries own a U.S. president. Half a billion dollars for some Russian oligarch or some Saudi prince is not a lot of money to be the top creditor to someone who may become the most powerful person in the world. Meaning that Trump would be working not on behalf of Americans, but on behalf of his creditor who saved his ass and saved his precious buildings. And so our foreign policy or our economic decisions would then be guided by how beneficial they would be to some other country. I don't think I need to explain how dangerous that would be. Another route might be that he could involve Truth Social. So this is a little wheezy, but the top line is that Trump Media, which seems to be the parent company of Truth Social, merged with an already public company called Digital World Acquisition Corp. That company is purportedly worth billions of dollars now. So Trump wouldn't immediately be able to sell any stock in the company for six months, so he wouldn't be able to be liquid in that way. But he may be able to convince a bank or a creditor, including a foreign creditor, to lend him money against his stock in that company, meaning it may, may actually be possible possible for Trump to get bailed out, whether it's by a bank or whether it's by, again, some foreign broker who might see this merger as adequate justification to be able to get in Trump's good graces. All the while, Trump continues to cry foul and present himself as the victim. He posted on True Social the other day that judging Goran was committing election interference. Here's the thing. It is not judging Goran's fault that Donald Trump made the conscious decision to commit fraud. If Trump isn't happy with the punishment that he was dealt for the crime he committed, then maybe don't commit the crime. Don't defraud the banks. Don't defraud the people of New York. Like, the guy is a clown and he's a con artist, but he's not dumb. He knew exactly what he was doing when he was offering one number for favorable loan rates and then another number for low tax rates. So no, none of this is judging Goron's fault. None of it is Biden's fault. None of it is the Democrats' fault. It is Donald Trump's fault. And if the guy is running to lead the self-proclaimed party of personal responsibility, he might consider actually taking some. Here's a preview of my interview with Jared Moskowitz. There are two discharge petitions right now in the House for foreign yeah. aid. So explain how this process works and then what is the status on those discharge petitions? Right. So here's the deal. So we have the Senate bill, right, which if the House, which passed with 70 votes in the Senate, which is, you know, that's a big bipartisan vote. And that is that is the foreign aid and the border security. Correct. OK. And, and so if you take that up in the House and we pass it, it will go right to the president's desk. Right. Which is the fastest way to help our allies in Israel, Ukraine, get humanitarian aid to the Palestinian people and Taiwan and also replenish our own arms. Let's not pretend 30 billion of that right. stays right here in country. Right. That's that's half of that amount that there was 60 Correct. billion dollars. Half of it was just to replenish our own military. Correct. 
with weapons again made in America. So job in you know helps jobs in this country. So all that money was staying here. So uh, that would go right to the Senate if that. I'm sorry, that would go right to the President if the House passed it. If we do a discharge petition, right, then it has to go back to the Senate, and that process starts all over there. Uh, but there are two discharge petitions out there. One is uh, being run by the Democrats, which is the identical bill uh, that the Senate passed. The identical bill the Senate passed, I have signed that discharge petition. The other is being run by Brian Fitzpatrick, which is not totally complete yet because he says he's going to amend it. Because right now there's no humanitarian aid in there. Uh, there's some limited border stuff in there. Uh, and, and he says he's going to amend it. He's going to strengthen the border stuff in there. He wants to do loans, he has said, to Ukraine because he believes that can get more Republican votes. By the way, if the loans are forgivable, I you know that might be a distinction without a difference. Right. So look, however we can get there, we need to get there. But if we don't take up the Senate bill, understand we start the and we pass something here, which would be a big deal. We're going to still start that process all over there in the Senate. So that doesn't mean we're done. It means we're done with the House. But now the Senate has to decide whether they want to take our bill. And that could take weeks over there. Uh, and Ukraine's running out of time. So at this juncture, we leave tomorrow for two weeks. So we are nowhere. Speaker Johnson has played politics with this. He has caved to Donald Trump. He didn't get Israel the aid they needed in his first week in office when he played politics by trying to do offsets with it. And so, you know, this has been... Uh, this has been a disappointing process for our allies, Israel and Ukraine, for our other allies who are watching us kind of, you know, fumble around and trying to stand by them. And our enemies are laughing, taking advantage of the process. Well, which which of these is likely to pass? Are either one of them likely to pass? Like, what do we expect to happen here? Have you heard anything from Republicans who may be interested in signing any of these discharge petitions or Ken Buck, for example, before he leaves? Yeah, it's unclear. Uh, I do think there is some movement on their side of the aisle with this loan idea. Um, I think that's getting traction. Why is that getting traction? Because that came, that idea came from Donald Trump about, about doing loan to Ukraine. So, of course, that's getting traction here now. By the way, they're pretending like that's a unique idea. That's actually how China does their foreign policy. They give loans instead of grants. OK, go around the world. You can talk to other countries that no one wants these loans. Uh, but, you know, look, if again, if we can get the aid to Ukraine, I don't care what we call it. We just got to make sure that we get that money over there so that they can have the weapons they need to fight off the invasion from Vladimir Putin. So he doesn't then continue to go to NATO countries. Yeah. Uh, you know, Mike Johnson has expressed openness to Ukraine aid in the past. And also um, his rhetoric suggests that he supports Ukraine right now. And yet yeah. he is unilaterally responsible for holding it up. So how do you explain the disconnect here? Motion to vacate. That's it. Motion to vacate. Three words. Motion <laughs> yeah. to vacate. That is controlling this entire process. If, if a couple members, you know, threaten to make a motion to vacate over Ukraine, he he goes and hides uh, and doesn't talk about it. So, you know, he's trying to find, I guess, cover maybe from with Donald Trump on, on that issue to survive a motion to vacate. That's how that's how I see it. So kind of like in the Senate where you don't even have to threaten, you know, uh, to do a to do a filibuster anymore. You just have to get 60 votes right now. You know, in his mind, you know, he just wakes up every day trying to survive the day. And so, um, you know, he's got this motion to vacate thing in his mind because it had been threatened in the past. And I, I think that's really what's guiding his whole view on this. Yeah, just just politics of fear, even even extending to the to the leaders of their own party. To watch the full interview with Jared Moskowitz, click the thumbnail right here on the screen or check out the interviews playlist on my YouTube channel. You can also listen to the audio version by clicking that link on the screen. And of course, to see more of my content, the subscribe button's on the screen as well.